We're going to speak about sinusitis today. Sinusitis is simply inflammation of your sinus passages. The research shows, according to the Centers for Disease Control, there's 29.5 million people that actually experience sinusitis on an annual basis. Hopefully you're not going to be one of them, and the tips which we provide today will give you that extra edge to beat that statistic. If you've ever suffered from sinus problems, you know it could be miserable. As you can see on this presentation, there are several sinuses within your body. The two that most commonly bother people are the frontal sinuses right by the eye. That's where you get, I have an eye headache or I have pressure over my eye. And or your maxillary sinuses, which actually about 25% of the time can lead to dental pain as well. When these passages become inflamed, air, moisture, and or mucus get trapped, causing pressure. So what are these sinuses? They simply warm the air, provide moisture, but they also create mucus secretions. Your nose is connected to these sinuses and these secretions allow for a natural protective mechanism. Moist membranes are healthy membranes. So these secretions are important. Your sinuses serve a purpose. Staying properly hydrated with water as well as other nutrients in that water allow you to stay optimally moist. But in addition, you want to make sure that your sinuses are also flowing freely. And we're going to talk about some nutrients, some substances which will allow you to take charge of not getting sinusitis and or at least at the very least controlling the sinusitis so that it's under control and doesn't become chronic. Acute sinusitis typically occurs after a cold or a flu. 80% of people will actually have some inflammation during those two weeks of a cold or a flu. However, what you want to do is not end up becoming chronic with your sinusitis. So when bacteria become trapped and they can't flow because the mucus is now stuck in your sinuses, you're risking the potential of becoming a chronic sinusitis patient. When your sinuses are painful and full for over 12 weeks, you've officially arrived in this chronic state. Our goal is to give you tips to deal with the acute sinusitis, but in addition, prevent the chronic sinusitis from being as likely a possibility. So you had pain for 12 weeks, now officially have chronic sinusitis. Well, you're in good company. 32 million people ignore their symptoms and are so weakened that their body becomes chronically inflamed. Chronic inflammation ultimately leads to heart disease, further problems, and more infections. So you can also suffer from sinus headaches from this. So now all of a sudden, not only do you have an infection and inflammation going in your body, you feel hot, you feel dizzy, you feel miserable, now you got pain associated with this too. Once again, bring down the inflammation, get the mucus flowing, and all of a sudden you will begin to feel better. Symptoms of course include pressure, sometimes pain in the teeth, as I mentioned dizziness, a warm flush feeling, sometimes ear pain as well. Once again, these are symptoms we have to together address the cause of the problem. So what can you do? Well, the simple one is to wash your hair before you go to bed. You're going to say, well, Dr. Melitis, what's washing your hair have to do with your sinuses? Well, if you go to bed with allergens, dust, pollutants in your hair, you flop around on the pillow, hopefully for eight hours, because you should get eight hours of sleep to restore your body, you're going to inoculate yourself for another eight hours. So can you imagine during the day, a little dust went by, you sneezed, your eyes watered for a moment, but that dust also landed on your hair and throughout the night you're flopping around on your pillow, putting your face on your pillow. Now all of a sudden you're getting exposed for another eight hours to the same thing that just that moment went by your nose that caused a problem. You can't keep on irritating your sinuses, otherwise you will have inflammation and that inflammation ultimately can lead to bacterial infections. We don't want that. Also avoid down pillows and down comforters. I tell my patients to use a nanotechnology cotton pillow. No down and of course definitely no feathers. Very, very important. Keep your beds off your, keep your pets off your bed is very important as well. Because if you don't keep your pets off your bed, what's going to happen? Their dust and pollen from being outside will land up on your bed again and you're going to have more irritation. In addition, avoid your food allergens. A simple food allergy test like this one is what I do for my patients. It's simple, it's affordable. In the buffet of life, you can actually take charge of Am I putting an additional burden on the body? Remember the straws on a camel's back? It's not that final straw that got the camel. It's a total burden. 
You can say, well, that final straw that broke up. No, it was actually the tomatoes, the avocados, and the garlic. All good for most people, but if, they're, if you're allergic to them, that's a problem. So what we encourage people to do is avoid the high reactive, moderate reactive foods, and as a result, lessen the burden in the buffet of life. You really can't choose what you breathe. You can say, well, I don't like the allergens outside, I'm gonna stay inside, that's true. But if your neighbor has a juniper tree or a kudzu tree or some tree or plant, you can't really go in their neighbor's yard and chop it down legally. So what are you gonna do about it? But you can do something about the foods you're eating. And so once again, that total burden is very, very important. In addition to washing your hair, staying well hydrated, getting enough sleep, there's some simple things you can do. Quercetin, it's a bioflavonoid. It actually helps the mast cells, M-A-S-T, not become releasing of their histamine. So you have a mast cell, it contains histamine. Sure, you can wait until you release the histamine and take an antihistamine, which makes you tired and worn out. And or you can take some quercetin, which helps stabilize those mast cells. So very important. Bromelain, derived from a pineapple, actually is an enzyme called a proteolytic enzyme, which lessens inflammation in the body. So once again, controlling the itis so the mucus is not backed up and it doesn't become infected. Likewise, vitamin C. When you're stressed, vitamin C is important. If you have a cat or a dog, they make vitamin C when they're stressed. You cannot make vitamin C when you're stressed. So eating produce, like an orange, very important. But also supplementing with vitamin C. If they feed the primates in the zoo some four to 6,000 milligrams of vitamin C, the vast majority of us don't come anywhere close. The statistic is that only 11% of Americans eat enough fruits and vegetables. In addition, NAC, N-acetylcysteine, it breaks up mucus, helps get that mucus out of your body so you're not sitting there like a petri dish growing bacteria. Very important, keep it flowing. In addition, nettles. Stinging nettles has been shown to help with sinusitis in a double blind study. That means the doctors didn't know, the patients didn't know that they were taking these stinging nettles and their sinusitis got better according to that study. Likewise, grapeseed extract helps with stabilizing the membranes and making you healthier and also golden seal. If you start getting a little yellow green tinge to your mucus, golden seal can be your friend. However, if you're pregnant, you definitely don't want to do that. So treating the causes is essential. Whatever is irritating your sinuses, you have to avoid. So once again, in the buffet of life, knowing which foods you're eating, very, very important. Staying hydrated, very important. Eight hours of sleep, restoration. If you look at the word restoration or bringing something back into its natural state, R-E-S-T, the first four letters are rest. Also, of course, what you want to do is control the inflammations in your body, because whether it be sinusitis, arthritis, or any other itis that might be occurring, inflammation increases heart disease, increases aches and pains in your body, robs your body of the quality of life. So when it comes to taking care of your body, Simple things, sometimes common sense, blended with some supplements, can really pay off with some big dividends. My patients are always amazed at how much better they can feel with some simple, proactive interventions. May be well.